North Korea is the only country that's actually withdrawn from the NPT. It, it had been a member and it announced that it was withdrawing uh, in 2003. It's not clear that the IAEA was the body that discovered that North Korea was in non-compliance. There was a, a controversial uh, American intelligence report in 2002 that suggested that North Korea in fact had a, a he hidden secret nuclear weapons program, even though there were IAEA monitors in North Korea. One of the problems is that in 1993, during the first crisis, uh, North Korea was promised light water reactors that it could use to produce nuclear energy. Uh, these were never delivered uh, as a function of a variety of, of, of political disagreements amongst the Japanese, South Koreans, and the United States. And so from the North Korean perspective, it could reasonably argue that it was entitled to pursue nuclear energy, uh, nuclear energy at the Yanbyon reactor. The problem, of course, with the Yanbyon reactor, which is not a light water reactor, it's a heavy water reactor, it produces plutonium as a side product of, of, of operating the reactor. And plutonium, of course, is one of the two ways uh, you can make a nuclear weapon. This was just after the Iraq case, so when agency was fairly vigilant in proving that it can use the new tools to its benefit. And uh, we, we used first time extensively uh, information analysis, third party information and environmental samples to look the case and fairly soon it came obvious that uh, North Korea may have not declared all the nuclear material which it had its in disposal. And then after this uh, disputes, agency also decided to invoke the instrument which it has used very seldom, which is a special inspection. It does seem certain now that North Korea did manage somehow to hide at least one important nuclear facility, not only from the IAEA, but from American intelligence, as far as we can tell. Uh, so the North Koreans, it seems, were cheating uh, for a long time. But in a sense, it doesn't matter too much whether it was, say, the CIA or the IAEA that discovered that North Korea was in non-compliance because there's routine communication between all of the intelligence communities of countries that have an interest in, in non-proliferation and the IAEA. There's a fair amount of information sharing. And uh, by the time North Korea realized that the cat was out of the bag, they decided that they were better off actually withdrawing from the NPT and kicking out all of the IAEA monitors. And that's, of course, precisely what they did in 2003. Uh, the first detonation was in, in October 2006, and that came about of a failure of the six-party talks to really bring, to, to work out the first provocation, if you like, of the new millennium, which was the 2003 withdrawal uh, uh, from the NPT. In September 2005, the six-party talks actually arrived in an agreement in which North Korea would take apart its program, let the IAEA back in to inspect, um, and in exchange it would be given security reassurances from the United States, energy aid, foreign aid, and so forth. Uh, in December of 2005, uh, the State Department sanctioned a bank in Macau uh, for laundering North Korean money. Uh, and that obviously was seen to be a very, was unwelcome uh, by, by the Kim Jong-il uh, regime. And that led to uh, the deterioration of that agreement and, uh, in my view, led North Korea to, to increase the tension, to ratchet, ratchet up the tensions a bit by first testing a missile in, in, uh, in uh, I think it's July 2006, and then testing a nuclear device in October 2006. What's important, I think, is that both that missile test and that nuclear test failed. In 2010, a scientist was visiting um, North Korea and they revealed to him uh, a very advanced uranium program. So in 2008, North Korea, uh, as a consequence of the negotiations that followed the 2006 test, uh, agreed to take apart its plutonium program, and it did. The IAEA was welcomed back in the country, uh, and they watched as North Korea uh, started to take apart the program. That involved imploding the Yanbyon uh, uh, tower, cooling tower at the Yanbyon reactor. What that means is that although they're not producing plutonium anymore, they still have enough plutonium, we think, for five to ten plutonium-based bombs. And now, of course, in 2010, they reveal a very advanced uranium program. Uranium programs are much easier to hide because you don't need a nuclear reactor to do them, right? You enrich uranium by bombarding it with uranium hexafluoride, and that can be done, that can be accomplished underground, and it can be accomplished at a variety of sites underground. The uranium program is not dissimilar to that. And so there's no doubt that North Korea wants to continue to pursue nuclear weapons. Uh, there is concern that it is going to test a weapon soon, and it will be interesting to see what kind of weapon it is they test. Uh, do they test another plutonium bomb to try to get it to work this time, 
or do they test a uranium bomb? Uh, and that will be an interesting, interesting uh, uh, phenomenon to watch. So the program is very much uh, active. It is clear, at least to me, that the, the Kim Jong-un uh, as president will continue to pursue nuclear weapons at the same time as engaging in the same kind of game his father did, going farther down the road, but backing off occasionally uh, in exchange for aid, food, and diplomatic assurances. One of the advantages of the IAEA is that it's not a state. It's an international body, and its members and its technicians come from all different countries. It would look, look like pretty much as what it looks like in Iran, which means that the IAEA has to establish the historical uh, uh, production of nuclear material in the enrichment program, the history of the program from R&D until today. See also North Korea's possible proliferation activities in order to make a full picture to see whether all nuclear material has been declared and all facilities in North Korea are under IAEA safeguards. So if North Korea can be persuaded once again to come completely clean and to allow probably for the first time genuinely thorough inspection and monitoring of its nuclear facilities, the IAEA would be the go-to organization and they certainly have all of the expertise to do that.